All right, to wrap up this app, I want to add basically a activity feed of the currently logged in user. So when they create or edit something, I just want to show it here of the basically the history. Now you could extend this to include other users if you really wanted to, but I'm more or less just concerned with the person that's logged in just so they have at least a timeline of events, you know. So to get started, this is going to require a gem and a pretty popular one is called activity public activity. And I'm already got it in installed in my gyms. If you're following along, you might as well, but essentially it does it kind of a, a timeline approach to a news feed and you can customize it to your heart's content pretty much. There's a cool screencast on it that Ryan Bates did. If you want to check out the repo and watch that, it's a little dated, but it does the trick to get started. I'm going to just go ahead and do what I did to get it invoked and like I said, you can make it track any type of thing on your app. Uh, it can track, say, a team or a user or a project. I'm going to make ours just worry about a user in this case. So it's going to focus on the user model first. So I'm going to add in our application controller, I should say, the include public activity. store controller. Okay, so that's step one. The next one is to go to our home controller. And we're going to set our actual activities query. So activities equals public activity. with two colons, activity dot order, uh, created at descending. This can be uppercase or lowercase. I like it either. Um, I kind of like it uppercase just so it's easier to spot. And then we want to check where an owner, which comes with a public in a uh, public activity gem equals the current user. So I'm just saying, hey, follow the current user. And then owner type equals user. Great. So that's the next step. Uh, on top of that, we need to add some views. So inside our views are gonna be the actual bits of what gets displayed for each action that you know is tracked a new folder and name it public activity. It has to be named this way. And inside that, since you're going to track certain things on a user, we want to create a new folder for teams and a new folder for project. Oh, it should be team. I'm sorry. Rename this. And then finally, we need to go find our actual models we want to track in this case and add the following code. So we just say, hey, include this in that tracking. And then I only want the owner to be the current user. So this is kind of how you set that up. Like I don't want to log everything. I just want to log the current user's activity. Controller dot current user. Sweet. Okay. So there's that one. And I'm actually going to just copy this and put it in our project. And these are in the models, mind you. Great. So what's left is to go to our views, which is basically just the one on the home page, and go to the dashboard. All the way to the bottom is the actual activity view. 
this is what the activity is going to look like when we get into those partials that we create for the views in the public activity. For now, I need to render the activities though. So let's go this way. It's just simply render activities and then activities since we called it this in our home controller. Great. And then inside each view, we can have a little partial explaining what's what's going on. And basically for each action that happens, you need a file and it's a partial. So I'm going to create update. It's like only the actions that take place when something's changed is what's going on here. So destroy HTML, ERB, and we'll want the same in the team folder. All right, so in the create method, or view I should say, uh, we simply have the following. Just using those functional styles I was talking about here, just so we can reuse them easily. Doing an li and a span class icon is small. I class fa fa pencil. created project. And then you, if it's trackable, you can get the actual name of the project. So we can even link to it too. So link to activity dot trackable dot name and then activity each dot trackable else if it's removed you can't really do much with it so it's just saying has since been removed great so creates done destroy is pretty simple we just want some styles on here to say class, oops, li dot pv2 ph border bottom span class icon is small. And then update is very similar to create. In fact, it's strikingly similar. You just want to say updated project and then change the, the icon to a refresh. Okay, so I'm going to add this as well to team, but just say updated team. And destroy, I'm going to add the same thing to destroy on here, but obviously call it team. And create will be similar. Okay, so if all goes right, we should be seeing uh, some activity as we as we log it looks like it can't spell first oh okay a huge thing you need to do is run a migration um, when you install this gem to get it to work I need to do this small line here it's easy to 
skip over. So I'm gonna add this to our migration, maybe here. I'll just paste that in. So this is what it looks like. Rails generate public activity migration. It should run its thing, creates a new migration. And we'll go to that just to look at it. it adds all this stuff. It's like polymorphic stuff, it's pretty interesting. Uh, but it adds these indexes on our activities table, owner ID, owner type, all that stuff we can reference with that. So I'm gonna add, I just like to add this based on my version. And then I'm gonna add db migrate flag here. Great, so that's in queue. We should be able to at least render this page now. Okay, cool. So I'm, just for grins, I'm gonna create a new project. Andy's project. Create. Cool, done, but then you see it there. So cool. If I were to delete a project, I could do so, I think, just by doing this, delete Johns. And we see removed a project, create a team, coolest team, cool guy. I have no idea what I'm doing, but it's all right. Cool guy, cool girl. And we create that team. They don't have Gravatars. That's a bummer. And hey, create a project maybe or something. I don't know. But anyway, with that person logged in, but I created that team, we got those emails and cool guy, cool girl, and then they can log in and join their account. It's it's nice to know as, as I'm, I guess, growing as a developer that this stuff is starting to make a lot more sense to me. So it's, it's nice to see it in reaction to where I used to be with Rails. I used to look at the, the language and just be freaking out. So hopefully it's helped you. I just spotted a bug with this as I'm wrapping this up. So maybe you can fix it, but I won't go into what it is. Aside from that, hopefully you enjoyed this series. I'd love feedback if you have it, if you have ideas for apps to build or maybe some stuff that you might wanna try your own hand in. I can always chime in to see what you can and can't do in terms of you know how you'd approach it in Rails or something like that. As always, this is more or less a course of action for me that just was a way to learn more about Ruby on Rails and to really build apps and stuff that's like actually production worthy. This one was pretty in depth. We learned Vue.js, used quite a few gems to get stuff rolled in, modified devise quite a bit. And you know, we got conf that confirmable action to work. We can send email locally, all these cool things that can happen just by, you know, all these files inside this project. So I think it's pretty cool. Uh, but anyway, I keep saying I hope you enjoyed it. Maybe you did, maybe you didn't. If you did, definitely uh, appreciate a subscribe or a like on the video. That would go a long way on YouTube if you're on that. If you're on my blog, thank you so much for being there. Put a lot of time and effort into it and really love doing this and showing all how to do it and trying to teach others. Thanks again for everything and um, hoping to do more of these soon, time permitting. But right now, time is of the essence. So let me know if I should keep going. I'll leave it at that.